This planet is drowning in energy. Every single day, the sun sends more power toward Earth than humanity could ever hope to use. It floods our rooftops, bakes the pavement, and slips unnoticed through windows. Yet here we are, still burning fuels, still paying bills, still acting like energy is scarce. But what if it wasn't? What if you could capture just a fraction of that invisible downpour and store it, control it, even bend it toward a single point of blazing heat? Today, that's exactly what we're going to try. Not with panels, not with batteries, but with mirrors. Let's begin choosing the right mirror material. Before even thinking about frames or motors, we had to answer a simple but crucial question. What type of mirror would work best for this project? It sounds obvious at first, just get something shiny, right? But when you're dealing with concentrated sunlight, reflectivity and heat absorption aren't just technical details, they're make or break factors. We started digging into the science behind different reflective coatings. Gold sounded tempting. It's famous for reflecting infrared light, which is great for telescopes and space science. But here on Earth, where visible light carries a big chunk of the sun's energy, gold loses its edge. Silver kept coming up as the better choice for visible light reflection. More bounce, more brightness, more heat at the focal point. Still, assumptions can be dangerous. We needed proof. That meant one thing, time for a test. Testing reflectivity, gold versus silver. We didn't want to spend weeks building something huge, only to realize we chose the wrong mirror finish. So before going big, we decided to run a small, controlled test. We grabbed two identical acrylic sheets and coated one with a silver chrome spray, the other with a gold chrome finish. To keep things fair, both got the same number of coats, same drying time, same everything. But the results didn't exactly look even. The silver one gleamed, almost like polished metal. The gold looked duller, almost flat. That was already a bad sign. But appearance can be deceiving, so we need numbers. We set up a quick rig, a small laser aimed at each mirror and a light sensor to measure the reflected beam. It wasn't laboratory grade, but it was consistent. First, the gold mirror, weak signal, barely a bump on the sensor. Then, the silver mirror. Big spike, huge difference. Still, lab tests are one thing. What mattered more was how each would handle real sunlight. Set up a heat absorption test with identical temperature sensors at each mirror's focal point. The result? Not even close. After an hour under the same sun, the silver mirror outperformed gold by a landslide. So the decision was clear. For this project, silver is it. With that settled, it was finally time to build something big enough to matter. Building the frame from idea to reality. Designing the frame felt like solving a puzzle where none of the pieces existed yet. We had a rough idea of what we wanted, something strong, lightweight, and capable of holding 18 individual mirrors. But turning that idea into reality was another story. We started with laser-cut wooden arms. Simple, affordable, easy to modify if things went wrong, which knowing our track record seemed likely. Connecting those arms was the next challenge. We needed joints that wouldn't wobble, but still allowed for minor adjustments later. Heavy-duty 3D printed brackets became our solution. Not exactly aerospace grade, but good enough for a backyard experiment. As the pieces started coming together, the scale of the project really hit me. This wasn't some desktop science fair model. It was big, larger than we'd pictured. And with every bolt tightened, the weight increased. That raised a new concern. How would this thing move? The entire structure needed to rotate on two axes for proper sun tracking. Horizontal rotation seemed manageable thanks to a large, lazy Susan bearing we found online. It was rated for much more weight than we needed, so that part felt safe. The vertical tilt, though, was trickier. The frame would pivot on a smaller axis, and with all that weight pressing down, we weren't sure if the motor could handle the load. To solve that, we designed an adapter flange, a kind of oversized gear that would sit at the heart of the entire system. It wasn't just a mounting point, it was also the foundation for the tilt mechanism, the motors, and even the control electronics. 
Looking at it now, we wondered if we were trying to do too much with one part. Too many functions packed into a small space usually means trouble. But there was no turning back. The frame was ready. Next came the mirrors. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. Spring Dilemma 3D Printing versus Metal Mounting 18 mirrors onto a curved frame sounds straightforward until you try it. Each mirror needed precise angle adjustments to focus sunlight onto a single point. The easiest way to achieve that? Adjustable screws with compression springs pushing from behind. That's when the next problem hit. Buying over 50 metal springs wasn't just expensive. It felt wasteful for a project meant to harness free solar energy. Started wondering could make our own? 3D printing seemed like the obvious answer. Flexible TPU filament was sitting on our shelf, and it's known for its resilience and stretchability. But printing something like a spring isn't the same as printing a simple bracket. It needs to compress, release, and most importantly, stay that way over time without turning into a deformed mess. So we ran a quick durability test, printed three different spring designs, each with varied wall thickness. Then we built a small compression rig to keep them squashed for hours, mimicking the kind of constant pressure they'd face behind the mirrors. As the hours passed, we checked for permanent deformation. To our surprise, the TPU held its shape better than expected. The idea of 3D printed springs suddenly didn't feel so crazy. Shaping mirrors, the spherical mistake. With the frame ready and the spring dilemma mostly solved, it was time for the part I'd been most excited about, shaping the mirrors. We started with sheets of clear plexiglass, laser cut into perfect discs. The plan was simple, apply reflective film, heat the plastic until it softened, then press it into a 3D printed mold to get the curve needed. At first, everything seemed to go fine. The film stuck. The plexiglass softened just enough in the oven, and with the clamping rig built, each disc took shape without much trouble. After hours of cutting, sticking, heating, and molding, all 18 mirrors were finally ready. But when we set them into the frame and stood back, something felt wrong. The light from the sun wasn't focusing into a single point. It was scattered, diffused. No intense hot spot like we expected. We went back to check the mold design, and that's when we realized our mistake. We had shaped every mirror as a section of a sphere. That sounds close enough to a parabola until you look at the way light behaves. Spherical mirrors send incoming rays to multiple focal points, not one. Great for decorative pieces. Terrible for concentrating solar energy. The solution was clear but painful. We had to scrap every mirror, redesign the mold with the correct parabolic shape, and start the entire process over. Sometimes progress means admitting when you've gone completely off course. Assembling the heat plate and water cooling. After reshaping all 18 mirrors with the new parabolic mold, the difference was immediate. Light now gathered into a tight, blazing focal point. But this raised a new concern. With that much concentrated energy hitting one spot, we needed something that could handle the heat. A plain surface wouldn't survive for long. So it designed an aluminum heat plate with a spiral groove running through it. The idea was simple. Pump water through the groove, absorb the heat, and turn sunlight into hot water on demand. Getting the plate made was surprisingly straightforward. We sent the design off to a CNC service, and within a week, the finished part arrived. Heavy, precise, and ready for action. We sealed the back with a clear plexiglass disc to create a closed channel for the water flow. It wasn't just about trapping the heat, it was about controlling it. Positioning the plate at the focal point took some tweaking. Even the slightest misalignment could waste most of the captured energy. Once everything was mounted, we ran a quick water flow test with a small pump. Even without full sun, the aluminum plate started warming almost instantly. The project was finally shifting from theory to something that felt real. Sun tracking mechanism. Simplicity meets doubt. Getting the mirrors and heat plate in place was only half the battle. The real challenge now was keeping the entire system pointed at the sun all day long. 
We kept the tracking system simple. Four light-dependent resistors, LDRs, are mounted around a small central shade. When sunlight wasn't hitting them evenly, the voltage differences told the microcontroller which way the mirror needed to adjust. Two motors handled the movements, one for horizontal rotation, another for vertical tilt. But as we watched the system move for the first time, doubt started creeping in. The tilt motor was mounted dangerously close to the pivot point. That meant less mechanical advantage and more strain. Worried the motor would burn out or worse, strip its gears under the load. We held our breath and ran a full rotation test. To our surprise, it worked. Not perfectly, not quietly, but it worked, at least for now. Looking at this finished build, I realized this project was never just about making something that works. It was about chasing an idea and being okay with the parts that didn't go to plan. From the wrong mirror shape to the doubts about motor strength, every setback pushed the design a little further. The frame holds steady. The mirrors move with surprising precision. The heat plate is ready. Now all we need is a clear day. But maybe that's the fun part, building something, knowing that the final chapter is still unwritten. If you've got suggestions, ideas, or things you would have done differently, let me know in the comments and stick around.